Hi everyone, Mandy from Little Nook Hair Studio and I'm back again with another video after our consultation videos that I had posted over the last couple of weeks. Today I'm going to start diving into client questions, questions that come to me um, just through social media if someone has messaged me or emailed me. Um, wondering about their hair or hair in general. So I'm gonna start going through that list now and making videos um, answering those questions. Now, this one kind of again pertains a little bit to consultation, but it's a little bit more on the preparation of the client before heading into the salon. So this question was um, along the lines of, I never know what to do with my hair every time I go into a stylist I can't really explain what it is that I'm looking for and I don't really know if what I'm asking for is right for me. So this particular person is not a client of mine, um, but they have been going to stylists. They only ever get their hair done in salon. They never do box color at home, so yay for that. Uh, but one of the issues that they're having and one of the questions that they have is how do I choose what to walk into the salon with how how do i know what to be asking for and how do i communicate it effectively with my stylist so the first thing that i want to start out is just kind of letting the client know what it is at home that you should be looking for to bring into the salon so a lot of people will come in so speaking personally with my own clientele and say Oh, well, I really want some red or they have no idea at all or they really want some blonde or they really want to grow their hair long or they want to get extensions every person that comes in either has a specific idea an open idea or they have no idea at all so there are so many different levels coming from a client's perspective of where their comfort is as a stylist we have to be extremely flexible to dive in to help that client because there are a few different avenues that each client can go down depending on what level they're at. So if someone comes in or if you are the client who has absolutely no idea what you want, that can be either a really great thing for a stylist because it opens up so many doors for us to give our opinion as to what would look best and all, it, for many stylists, much like myself, the creativity automatically starts churning. But what we really have to, what we really have to focus on is what does the client not want at all? And when was the last time that they loved their hair? So asking those two questions kind of gives you a broad spectrum of like, okay, they absolutely have no idea what it is that they want to do today, but they may know when they last loved their hair, what that looked like, if they have a picture or if they, or if they can explain it, or they might know what they do not want. Do not put that on my head because I will not be happy, right? So as the client, even if you have no clue what it is that you're walking into the salon and wanting to have done, at least know what your no's are. What do you not want done? And then make sure that you express with your with your stylist why or if you're the stylist asking make sure you get that information because for some clients which has happened to me in the past it may have just been a bad experience that they had in the past and that has carried over into them never wanting to try that again it may be the best color or the best haircut for them or the technique that you're using or you want to use that they're saying nope i don't want it it might actually be the best thing for them but perhaps they just had a bad experience with it or if you're the client you had a bad experience with it so just make sure you're sharing that information if someone comes in and they have an idea of what they want but they're not completely 100 percent on it be sure to break that down so when i have a client come in this has happened so many times i honestly can't even count um everybody perceives things differently so a great example of this is if you were to place the letter m or the letter w on the floor and one person was to stand on one side of it and another person was to stand on the other side of it, the perspective of that letter on the floor is different for both people. It's the same shape, it has the same points, it comes up and down and up and down at the same spectrum, but 
For one person, it looks like the letter M, and for one person, it looks like the letter W. So this is a really good analogy that I like to use when explaining this, whether I was teaching stylists in the past or um, helping my client to understand why sometimes they may have had a bad experience in the past. It's, it's usually just a difference of how people perceive things. So some clients will come into me and they'll say, I want red hair. Well, red to me, if I'm just thinking off the top of my head is like that crimson red or, you know, a, a bright red lipstick. Like that is red to me when you say red. Some clients see it as copper or a violet red. So it's, it's a, red is a wide spectrum. But the biggest thing as a, as a stylist that you should be showing to your client and as a client that you may want to bring in with you is always a picture. Um, I tend to steer away from swatch books and I learned this very early on in my career. Swatch books, which is the book of colors that stylists have that they offer, that they carry in their cabinet, Swatch books are done on white hair. So these bright, vibrant reds that are in that book, if as a new stylist, let's say, usually you will learn this as you go, but if as a stylist you were to show a client this swatch book, the client picks the color they want on that swatch, and then as a stylist, you go mix that and put it on their hair, nine times out of 10, there's a much bigger scientific piece, a much bigger color mixing piece that you need to um, be looking at because if you just go and mix that color straight up and put that on that client's head, it may not turn out that color at all. So, so many things go into, into that consultation to figure out what is red to that client. So if someone comes in and they have an openness to where they're willing to go with their hair, just be sure that even though they are open and they kind of have a general idea of what, of what they want, Make sure that you have that shared reality of what is red to you, what is blonde to you, what is a cool blonde to you, what is a warm blonde to you, and that's in the hands of the stylist. Um, as a client, it's kind of a little more difficult for you to know what we learn in hair school. Um, as a cosmetologist, it's there are many different tips and tricks and things that go into determining what color is going to go into the hair. Same thing goes for a haircut, you know, knowing face shape, asking that client, going through that consultation, knowing what do you do from day to day? What is your lifestyle like? Do you have time to continuously style this? Are you going to put the money into the products that you're going to need to spend in order to have this haircut maintained? Um, so if somebody comes in and they know exactly what they want, and this is what I'm getting, this is the picture, I've had this picture on my phone forever, I love the length, I love the style, I love the color, I don't want anything except for this. This can be tricky for two reasons. One is that what they want so badly may not be obtainable, and it's going to be very hard to try to maneuver the way of thinking or to to work out a plan that is going to be most beneficial for the client and their hair. So clients hear this just because you see this picture and tons of stylists turn this color out every day. This is typically what leads to possibly a bad experience. If you are wanting something so badly and maybe the stylist is just a personality where they really don't like to disappoint. We're all people pleasers. As stylists, we want to please our customers and our clients. Um, but maybe the, the stylist that you're talking to just wants to say yes and wants to try it. I have been there. I still do it because we want to deliver, especially to that client who has been chasing this hair dream since they've ever started going to a hairstylist. But sometimes there are factors that make that specific hairstyle impossible to do with just color or just a cut. And so many factors go into it. It can be medications that you're on that alter the hair and the ability for it to do what it needs to do with the chemical reaction that is in color. It can be the hair texture, the hair type, you've gone through hair changes. Maybe you're saying like, I had this cut for 20 years and now all of a sudden my hair, nobody can get it. It may be that your hair changed. Um, somebody coming in going for that nice platinum blonde, I can tell you right now, if you take a look at my hair, 
my hair was very dark. My hair pulls, everybody pulls warm when we lift color out of their hair to try to get you blonde. Every single person, it goes through the color level system and I will go through that in a whole other video. That's a whole other topic. Um, but if your hair is pulling warm, some people stay there, that's me. I stay at a warm golden tone and I've learned to live with it because if I want to be platinum and I want to be ashy, there are so many factors that go into it for me. But one of the main factors is that a lot of my length has to go because my hair is of the type, it's very brittle, it's hard to maintain. I can use all of the building products out there to uh, regain protein and hydration. And I mean, I'm a hairstylist, I have everything at my fingertips and still for me, my reality of having long platinum blonde hair with just a hair color is not possible. However, if someone comes in and they are stuck on, or if you are the client and you are stuck on this one thing, there are options. There are um, uh, extensions, which are one of the, the biggest things that I use as a tool for people who want to chase that color that they just can't get. If they like the funky colors and they're fading out, if they like blonde and it's fading out or it's not happening, these are options. If you want that haircut that has, you know, an inversion, so that's longer in the front, shorter in the back. For some clients, I have clients whose hair will not grow in the front. It just, it, it is a mystery. And, um, you know, they want that length in the front. I have clients who wear extensions just in the front, just around their face, and you would never know it because they want that length in the front. So there are many options, but just know as, as the client and the stylist that that comes at a bigger price point. So as the client at home, before you are coming into your stylist, come in knowing that there needs to be a conversation. There has to be a consultation if you're looking for change. If you're looking to get to a specific color or a specific haircut, it can't just be a two second, you know, okay, I want this. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Um, you know, your stylist will have to look at your hair type and your hair texture and ask you the questions. Are you going to be doing this every day? Because if I do this haircut, I can maneuver it to look like this picture today. But if you're not using these products and doing this routine at home, it may not look this way again. Are you okay with that? Um, when it comes to color, blonde, I'm gonna go to blonde again because blonde is the number one color that is the most high maintenance. And the reason being is not strictly just because of the color itself or getting your roots done or having to be in the salon or whatever the case may be. It's the product that you have to use at home. And I say, have to use at home if you want to maintain what's happening in the salon chair. So if you're coming in and you want that nice platinum blonde or on the flip side of that, if you want a vibrant color, a vibrant red or a copper or even a, a blue, whatever the color may be, but I use blondes primarily because that's usually who is sitting in my chair. Um, there's so much that goes with that. You are damaging the hair when you are lifting the color out. So you need Protein, protein rejuvenation and hydration to maintain the hair at home and prep it for the future appointments. You need products that are going to keep mineral buildup out of your hair or buildup in general out of your hair. You need heat styling. This is for most clients. Heat styling um, for every client really who's using hot tools. Heat styling to protect your hair from further damage. And this is one thing that has stuck with me forever from education that I have taken what temperature do you cook your turkey at? And I suck at cooking, so I, you know, I wouldn't actually know this if I hadn't been a, a hairstylist, but if you are setting your oven to a temperature high enough to cook a turkey and your flat iron goes to that same temperature, you need heat protection. If you are putting that on your hair, blow dryers, same thing. If you can cook a turkey at that temperature, imagine what it's doing to your hair. So hot tip. You need hot, hot tool protection. Um, you know, furthermore, a toning conditioner or a toning agent in a shampoo. These are things, these are realities. So can I get you to this color or can I get you to this haircut in my chair? Absolutely. But you really have to ask and think about when you're looking for the style that you're going in and asking for, is this going to be maintainable for me? Or are you okay with it 
looking differently when you leave the salon after a week or two uh, without the maintenance that has been suggested for you. When you are looking at pictures of haircuts, cover the face. And I've said this before, if you're looking at a haircut or a hair color that seems so gorgeous, so beautiful, it's perfect, I love it, I love the texture and the layers and look at her or look at him, cover the face because 90% of the time, and this is hot marketing, this is this is how it is. When, when I go into a photo shoot and I prep a photo shoot model, their makeup is done to the nines, their clothing is you know really attractive and selective for that specific photo shoot. And we all remember the Rachel haircut from Friends. Um, there was a Kelly Clarkson color that floated around for quite some time. You know, people would come in and ask for these specific celebrity haircuts. And when you cover the face, or when you explain, or have it explained to you as the client that this cut is on this hair texture with this hair type, and this is the upkeep, and this is what it's going to take, and this is a really well done blow dry. This Rachel haircut was blow dried to perfection with a round brush. Um, so cover the face first and see if you still like the style, and then make sure you're asking your stylist, or as the stylist, make sure you're telling your client this is the upkeep. This is what it's going to take to maintain what you're asking for. And then again, when you're looking at pictures, if you're wanting a red or a blonde or coming in with words like I want red or I want purple or I want short or I want long, this is in comparison to that analogy that I gave with the W and the M, depending on what side you're standing on or how you're viewing that color or that shape or that texture or that length, it could be completely different for your stylist. And as a stylist, what you're thinking could be completely different for your client. So make sure you're getting on the same level, that shared reality. Bring a picture. As the client, bring a picture. I love pictures. And sometimes that picture may be not able to happen. But then that's my job as a stylist. At least then I have a starting point to say, that exact cut can't happen, but we could tweak it here and here, and then you could have this. Or, um, you know, we'll use Jane Doe. Jane, because of the fact that, you know, you like to get up and not spend much time before you go to work in the morning, and then you get home and you run every night, and you're in the pool a couple times a week, like, Unfortunately, this short haircut that needs to be styled every single day and this blonde, blonde hair color, can we do it? Yes, but will it be beneficial for you in styling as quickly as possible and having that low maintenance that you're looking for? No. So it's just that conversation and then going beyond to say, but if, why don't we do this or why don't we try that? It opens the floor and it has a solid foundation for your stylist to work with or if you're the stylist for you and your client to work with. So again, I'm beating that, that horse with, you know, let's do the consultation and let's talk about it and get on that shared reality because it is extremely important. As the client, again, if you're looking at pictures, keep in mind, you know, if you see a picture that you love with a haircut and this person that you're looking at in the book or online has tons of hair and you know maybe it is I don't know very thick and there's lots of it and every individual hair is also thick and yours is fine and thin chances are that haircut and that color is not going to look at all the same on your head so excuse me, always be mindful when you're looking at colors and cuts that the hair looks somewhat the same as best as you can because then that's gonna give you and your stylist a better opportunity to come to that shared reality. Alternatively, um, most places consultations are free of charge. So for you to just come in and have a conversation with me to ask me a couple of questions, that is free of charge. But you can also inquire to see, hey, how much would it take for me to come in for a half an hour? What would that price tag look like for me to book a half an hour with a stylist to very specifically nail down what it is I'm looking for or to very specifically nail down what products I need in order to make my hair feel, look and perform better when I'm getting my services done. Um, I do paid 
consultations as well where I can do a test strand. So I've talked about test strands before and I'll put a post up later on about what that looks like and how it helps of doing a test strand to see, you know, if you've been coloring your hair and you don't quite know the history and you don't know the last time that you had A, B, C, or D done, having your stylist take a piece of hair, so a strand of hair, I'll pick one from here, but normally I take it from the back around the nape, and pulling a test strand through that strand of hair with lightener in a foil so that the stylist can see and so that you can know, you know what, Jane, your ends were super, super, super damaged after I put that lightener on there. Did you have foils a couple years ago? And then you know, and then you can start recollecting, oh, that's right, I did have that done. Or there's banding of color, which means there's a one color and then another color and then another color and the lifting is really uneven. Maybe you can only lift to an orange or a yellow. These are all things that help the stylist be able to give you guidance furthermore. So if you are a stylist and you're ever in a situation where a client comes in and you're like, oh, I don't really know. Like I can't make any promises. I don't like to make promises as it is, but I feel a lot more confident in moving forward with an appointment if I've done that test strand on something that seems maybe a little bit risky or something that seems a little bit like I don't have all the information I need. So call your salon or your stylist and ask, can I have a paid consultation so that I have a solid plan and so that you and your stylist both feel extremely confident moving forward in that appointment. So I hope that has helped. If you are looking to come up with a new hair plan, I hope maybe it helps you understand. You know, I know that some stylists maybe have a harder time with consultations or maybe they themselves have a hard time expressing what it is that they mean or if you are the stylist, work on that because it's extremely beneficial to have that great consultation. But I hope that helps as a client to better, you know, open up what the stylist is looking for from you or what is most beneficial for us to know. Um, and and from there on out, you know, hopefully it's it, things are clear and you have that consultation and you come up with that plan and always reach out. I mean, even if you're not my client and you have a question and you're like, listen, like I've been doing this color. I don't think it's working for me or I've really been thinking about this. What do you think? I'm here. I don't no sweat off my back to help anybody. So if you need to message, feel free. If you are a stylist and you need help with your consultations, I am more than happy to help you. It is, I love my consultations, obviously. So um, that is what I have built my clientele on is a, a clear, concise consultation and knowing and hearing the client and digging for that information. Dig, 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 you know, um, and get all of the information in that bubble and move from there. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I will make another video this week on other topics that have come up from clients and non-clients. And if you have one, please feel free to let me know. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.